one. All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Don't Kill the Messenger with your host, Victor from the VentoBot. And on today's episode, I have a very special guest where we're going to dive into a really cool topic here, something that we do ourselves. And it's, it's actually super fun to do. And I think most people don't quite understand exactly how to maximize the use of their content and how to repurpose it and get the most use out of it. So I'm bringing in a guest today, Tim Gillette, who is going to Tim here is, I, I met through a variety of acquaintances, actually. We, we have a cool um, little history there. And one of the cool things about him is he really makes marketing simple and an easy path. It helps you really create an easy path to bring people to you. So welcome in my guest today, Tim Gillette. Hey, Tim, how you doing? Hey, hey, man. How are you, Victor? Good, good, good. So uh, I know we met through, I, I forget it because we touched on so many different topics almost when we did when we actually met so it was super cool uh we were at an event a virtual event together and we met through facebook and all this stuff and you even had me on your show and it was it was great so um there's a lot i, of actually, I think i've actually had you speak at one of my virtual events as well now it's like you know yeah, I mean, we've yeah. almost gone the full gamut here <laughs> yeah i know it, it's it's crazy how fast the virtual world moves um which actually is super cool to think about that you're going to be touching on and really diving into repurposing um our content because i feel like I don't know if, if you're anything like me, but a lot of people feel like they always have to create new things all the time. Um, I'm under the impression that I create one thing really well once, and to me, it's boring, but everyone else sees it new every time. Well, uh, yeah, I agree with that. I mean, why, uh, why spend so much of your time and effort stressing over creating new content I mean, Gary V doesn't even create new content. He just, right? he just yeah. takes his camera with him everywhere he goes. That's, that's yeah. new content. Yeah, All right. True. I love it. Yeah. So like, what, what is it, I, I guess, what's the biggest misconception when it comes to content creation for most folk? You know, I, I, that I've got to get it perfect. All right. You know what I mean? I've got to have the perfect interview. I've got to have the perfect blog post. I've got to have the perfect live stream. I can't say um and ah on my video. Oh my gosh. It, the world might end. Uh, you know, don't be so perfect. It's imperfection that, that, that'll that actually draw people in. Doesn't mean you don't improve, all right? But, True. you know, when I, I mean, when I first got started speaking, I screwed up a lot. When I first got on camera, I screwed up a lot. When I got on, you know, podcast, I screwed up a lot. Um, you know, I, I, I screwed up a podcast one time interviewing Bob Berg, all right? Oh, Bob said to me when we had a conversation letter, I never knew you screwed up. He just, he says, I thought you were doing a great interview. And I'm like, in my mind, I'm like sweating bullets. I wasn't on camera. It was a, uh, audio. I'm yeah, yeah. sweating bullets. Oh my gosh, I've screwed up in front of Bob Berg. Uh, he's never going to say anything nice to me ever again. And he didn't even notice. All right. It was, uh, it was all on me. Uh, something that slipped and like, I got nervous. And then I question, double questioned myself. And I think so many of my, you know, my listeners, the people who connect to me, that's the biggest thing they come to me was, oh, I, I don't have to be perfect. Oh, oh yeah. I can make money and not be perfect. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I, I love that you touch on that because I, I, at first, I feel like when I first started um, creating content to put out there, whether it be blog posts, videos, live videos, and things like that, I, I would do the same thing. I, I, I think it holds a lot of people back. They're like, I gotta, I gotta have the right lighting. I gotta have the right this. I gotta have the right that. You know, like currently I'm, um, I'm in a different place right now. I mean, you don't have my normal place, like normal office, normal background, everything like that. And it's, it's okay. It's, it's, it's life. Like, you know, things happen. We adjust, we adapt and, and I love it. Yeah. I mean, so, lighting, I, you know what I mean? I've got like one ring light on right now, but I have other lights that I just didn't turn on today, but like I could, I can brighten it. I just did. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. I, I love it. So I, I guess what, so as far as content creation goes, like, I feel like that's one big myth here, right? It has to be perfect. Second, I have an idea of, of what you're going to say next, but I'm curious, what else have you found as far as like creating the content or, or finding a way of how to put it out there? What stops people from really just getting it out? You know, forget it out. It's like they're afraid to promote it. All right. You know what I mean? It, 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 remember the old thing that uh, yeah, I think it was a Kevin Costner movie. If you build it, they will come. No, yeah. if you market it, they will come. Yeah. You can put, yeah. I mean, I could put a, a blog post up today. If I don't do anything to drive traffic to it, it ain't happening. 
All right. And, and I don't believe in, in sitting around and waiting for the SEO gods to rain down on me. No, <laughs> I, I, I just, yes, I agree. SEO is important, but I'm not fully relying on it. You know what I mean? If, if there's 101 ways to get traffic to my website, I'm going to tap into all 103. I mean, that's just, I mean, come on. <laughs> Yeah. You want to get traffic, get traffic. Don't stop at one place, you know? I, That's I my agree. biggest thing. So what would you tell someone, like, here's the thing, because I've heard this in the past plenty of times. I don't want to seem too pushy with what I promote and what, what's out there. Um, I have my own narrative around that as well, um, but I, I would love to hear your perspective on that. When someone says, like, I don't want to feel too pushy of putting it out there or anything like that. You know, I, 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 I don't want to, this is not meant, what I'm about to say is not meant to be political, all right? Oh, sure. But I, I want to okay. put that out there, but I want to put it for you to think about this. There are many things and, think, or, or, and things, events happening in our world that are being forced and, and pushed on us, all right? And, yep. and I'm not saying what they are and, not, and I'm not going to alleviate, but you hate sure. it when it's pushed on you, right? So if you don't like it when it's pushed on you, don't push on people suggest. You know, I, I love to test things to find out. I did a test email with my list this weekend on something I haven't done uh, probably about two years that I've done it with my list. 13 people opt off. Oh my gosh, I screwed up. No, oh, okay. I know that don't work and I'm not going to do that again. All right. Yeah. It's, I, I learned. Uh, but most of the stuff I put out even to my email list is it's like these nine word emails. Hey, uh, I created this video. Check it out. Click here. You know, yeah. and it's like, I suggest it to people. You know what I mean? Uh, I can suggest a steak to you, but if you're a vegetarian, you don't have to take me up on that steak. You can just go ahead. Sure. Thanks, Tim. I'm, I'm a vegetarian. Great. I know not to offer you a steak next time. I know that if I'm having a great one of my, you know, uh, you know, kale salads to invite you over. But like if I'm cooking steaks on the grill, it's not for you. True. Yeah. No, I love it. I love it. Okay. So then we, we know like su suggesting instead of just feeling like we're not, we're not pushing anything on anybody because we don't like it ourselves, but we, we suggest people like, Hey, I have this thing. Would you like to go check it out? It's up to them at that point to whether they do or not. And then mm -hmm. of course, not having to be perfect all the time. I love those, those two insights there for sure. So yeah. let's kind of dive into what repurposing that content is. I, I feel like a, there's so much, that people can think of like, oh, sure, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to I'm gonna cut this video up or I'm going to do X, Y, Z with it or I'm going to turn it into a blog post or whatever that looks like. So what, what would you say to that? Like what's, what's the first thing we need to know about repurposing the use of our content? Well, I mean, first of all, start with the simplest form to create it, all right? There's two things I use to create almost all my content. Number one, I, I, well, three. I use Zoom just like you're using Zoom to record sure. this. But I use StreamYard to send out to do all of my interviews and 90% and of my posts now. I used to use Ecamm with my Mac. Um, yeah. And the other thing I use is my iPhone. All right. I turn my yeah. iPhone camera on and I create content with it. And now most people are like, well, don't you ever type it anymore? Why? I could say it into that. I, for, you know, a buck a minute, I can get it transcribed. You know, uh, why am I going to sit down there and type it out when I can just turn on the think machine and talk to the camera? All right. Yep. I, uh, yeah. I, I do that uh, and create it that way. So I'll either going to create it in an interview style. All right. With StreamYard and put it out into my social channels, or I'm going to create a, a live video with my iPhone. Now I, I've got it there. If, number one, I can just doing that can probably put it in three to five places just from that right. one thing, as opposed to put it here, move it here, move it here. Move it. Now it's, it's broken up. It's already on YouTube. If I do the, the um, StreamYard, so if it's already on my YouTube channel, now I can grab it off of YouTube and, and break it up. I can go over to YouTube and, and make sure I get all the keywords right. I can, you know what I mean, tweak it. Um, I can now put, you know, a beginning and end on to it on in there and put in suggested videos at the end. All right. Can put a subscribe uh, button. You know what I mean? There's all kinds of things you can do along the way with that one piece of content. But I said another word there, transcribe. Most people don't think of the fact that, you know what I mean? Well, that's... That's money. I could do it myself. Great. How much is your time worth? Oh my gosh. I anyway, love I've got a daughter that does this that. for a, yeah, I love a daughter that does this for a business. All right. She doesn't, she has time. She needs to make money. So I just, I tell her, Jess, transcribe this video, download it and transcribe it. And sure enough, she transcribes it word for word. She's got a system down and it works. Is it the simplest system? Probably not, but she needed to make money, pay her to make money. 
Yep. You know, but I think rev.com was one of the most face- famous ones out there. And I think they're cheaper yeah. than a buck a minute now. Uh, yeah. I think they have their, what their automatic, that's like 80%, um, about 80% accurate or something like that. But yeah, that's a great start for someone and then have someone proofread it. Exactly. Yeah. I, lo- I love it. Cause yeah. I, I think th- that's the biggest thing. And most people overcomplicate having to do it. They're like, I need to hire this professional video editor to chop it up and make all these cool effects. And I, I think that goes back to that first thing you said, we're trying to make it perfect. Whereas keep it simple. And I, I love this idea of keeping it simple because it's, it's, it's easy. And it's of course, that's why it's simple and easy. That's the way Tim's doing it. That's yeah. my trademark, simple, <laughs> easy marketing. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Simple, easy marketing. Yeah, exactly. I love it. And it's authentic because yeah. There, there's no like bells and whistles. I feel like that was, that's so, in, it's funny how that happened. Like, I feel like we originally started that way and then people started bringing their whole, I think the, the traditional media to like our social platforms and mm-hmm. making it fancy and cool and thinking it needed to be like a commercial instead of like the authentic, like, hey, I'm gonna pop up on my phone. But just like you said, pop on a live and just go. I, and you, you know, one of the things that made me see that the hardest for me, Victor, was um, probably about three or four years ago, it might be almost five now. Uh, one day I'm, I'm, I'm sitting at home and I get a call from my mom. My mom lived in the Northeast back then. She lives close to me now and said, Tim, I don't, I don't know if you remember, uh, this family that we had growing up, uh, their name were the Isgers and, uh, you know what I mean? Nancy was the daughter. Uh, I forget the little son's name. Uh, and the mom was Diane and I knew them as cause they were, were the ta- small town we grew up. She said, well, I don't know if you heard, but, but Diane's, um, her, her, um, she, she's with her son who's dying of this disease, but her daughter just died of the same disease and she wasn't there. She was on the other side of the country taking care of the son dying of the same disease. On that day, I heard that my friend Valerie, who now lives in Tennessee, but lived in Florida on that very same day. All right. She's in a mastermind with us. And she just voiced, I came home today and my husband told me, move out so my girlfriend can move in. And I'm like, I just, it just hit me like, oh my God. I mean, I just something emotional. And I just, you know what? I'm going to turn the camera on today and talk. And that video, uh, you know what I mean? I can't name the places I can, it went, n- not from my own being, but me just talking to people. Yeah. Being me. All right. Yeah. Uh, and, and that video reached around the freaking world. Now it's not like, I don't call it viral. It may viral for my terms, maybe, but it's not like it got a million views, but there are people who came out of the woodwork who hadn't seen me in 25 and 30 years that reach out to me and said, Oh my gosh, I seen your video. You know what I mean? Because I turned it on and just been me not trying to be superficial me. Um, the only, I think there's, there's like one other time I've ever done that. And it really prompted me to, you know what I mean? Just blot and it, and it brought in people. I think it was like when my, I went to my, my best friend, Richie's grave site. All right. And I did a video live stream video from his grave site. And I've had people who are friends of his from around the world. And he's been gone 18 years now. All right. And people who reached out to me uh, from around the world who knew him and, and didn't know me. And you know what I mean? It gained my following. Again, wasn't designed on, well, how do I orchestrate this? How do we make money right, with yeah. it? No, it's just, I turned the camera on and I built the following because I turned the camera on. Yeah, and the, well, that's, that's it. It's like, I, I love how simple this is because it's, I don't, I don't understand and why most people do. They, they, they really do overcomplicate it. They're like, I gotta go viral. Yeah. Personally, I'm like, why? Um, I, I'm sure you know who Seth Godin is. And, yeah, yeah, you know, he says, like, be famous to the family all the time. And it's just, yeah. like, you don't have to be, uh, I mean, I, I never thought I'd use this in the podcast, like, like a Kim Kardashian, right? Like, you don't need to be known by everyone. You need to be known by the right people. Yeah. And exactly being yourself attracts the people that are like you, that are going to be interested in what you have to say. And I, I love that because it's, it's true. If, if we're able to simply just be humans we're able to connect with people well i mean yeah if if you're out there looking for everybody to be your customer well then yeah you're gonna have to go do that i'm not all right i i mean i take on a a, you know what i mean a total of like 12 new clients a year it's not like i I, it's not like i'm looking for mounds of people all right 12 new one-on-one clients a year that's all i take on i i don't i don't want more than that that's it 
you know, so I don't have to advertise the masses. I need to find 12. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I love it. And because, I mean, it's, it's like, it, it really does go back. Um, I forget where this quote is from or who says this, but they say like, if you have a thousand true fans, Mm -hmm. um, I know Pat Flynn calls them like super fans and there's things like that, right? Like that's all you really need. Um, a thousand true fans or even a hundred true fans like that in itself is so valuable. I think people, most people forget that. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, and that's it. I mean, I mean, I, I, and of course, I, this is your interview, but I mean, I'd love yeah. to ask how you create fans, but I, I like how, how everybody creates fans, but. Sure, sure. I mean, like, the, the, I, again, I, I, I talk about a certain thing. Um, I have different perspectives on, I have very strong opinions of certain things one way or the other. Um, and I think that either repels or attracts the right people, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and, and not to say, and not to say, because I, I feel like that can be misconstrued in the sense of, um, someone for example saying well oh you're only attracting people that are think like you not necessarily there are people that are think have opposites uh, opposite form of ways of thinking that, than i do uh, for example i truly believe that facebook ads are the complete and most effective way to market anything mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and there's, yeah. there's like i strongly believe that however there's other people that are like well it doesn't work for me. And then they, they bring up some topic or something like that. But that's another interview. That's another episode all, all yeah. in, in itself. But I mean, like, so, so what, what would you say as far as repurposing? So we, we transcribe it, we turn, we, we multicast it. Um, what's other ways to really maximize and get the most use out of our content? Well, I mean, you know, I also uh, agree with the idea of putting it out as an audio podcast, putting it out as audio yeah. and video clips here and there. But you know something that was that that a, a lady did with me. I was on her um, on her radio show podcast in like 2011 or 12. It uh -huh. might have been 2013. And um, every about every three to four months, I see myself getting tagged on Twitter still from that interview in 2013 <laughs> from a quote or two quotes. She takes like one or two quotes and talks about it. Uh, and like she'll go like you know check out this check out this podcast. Uh, and find out how Tim Gillette met his mentor. All right. And she tags me. And most uh, people will, will never come in there with a podcast and realize there is one line or two line quotes that you can use yeah. to requote. On my podcast, I play a game at the end. And I have somebody who did this like, <laughs> like outrageously cool comment about my game. All right. And one of my questions, I quote her all the time. She's in real estate. All right. She's not even like, she's not, in, she's not totally looking to be an online marketer like you and I. She's yeah. in real estate in Nashville, New Hampshire. But her quote was just like, I, I, and I wrote her, I said, you're the most quoted person on my podcast because you so took awesome. something and went like, oh, it went off this line. Uh, and it was a joke. Well, that now makes her quoted. Do you yeah. think they're going to go check her out? Well, heck yeah, they're going to go check her out. And uh, if they live in California and then all of a sudden they have to move to Nashville, New Hampshire, who do you think they're going to reach out to, to connect oh, yeah. with to buy a house? Her, because you know what I mean? She actually has been quoted all around the world now. This is funny. Here's, here's what we just talked about in action because I, I interviewed um, Dana Malsaf from Boss Mom mm -hmm. and she actually said, stop quoting and start being quotable, mm -hmm. which is super interesting. It's one of my favorite things that I've ever heard anyone say. And exactly what you just talked about, because of how that real estate agent is, became quotable, like how much more famous is she, right? Be, yeah, be, yeah. And to the right people, the people that will be looking for her. There's other people, of course, but famous to that family, people in California that follow you, that now listen to that. And they're like, like, like you said, when they're ready, we'll reach out to her because of that one quote and they'll remember her for it. Well, I mean, and I repost the pictures of my childhood friend, Tim. Uh, this other friend of mine, Tim, and, Tim and yeah. I grew up in a small town in Pennsylvania. And Tim still lives in that small town, but he's a woodworker. And he does all of these cool things uh, with woodworking. And he's also a baker. So okay. he's known as the woodworking baker. So I'm always <laughs> showing his pictures. I'm always sharing his stuff. All right. And you know what I mean? I'm at a conference. This was about two, three years ago. I'm at a conference and talking. And I said, well, you yeah, know, my good friend, Tim, he actually does this on that. And someone goes, I know who that guy is. I follow him on. And I mean, it's like, my friend is totally 
you know, I don't say cashed in, but in a way he's cashing in on the fact that I talk about him. I share his stuff everywhere. If you're quotable, if you're doing something that is of value, people are going to share it for you. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? Absolutely. I, I, it's true. I love it. Yeah. Because it, it's, I mean, look what I just did with Dana, right? Like I, I love that quote and it, it, it really speaks to a, the way I think about marketing and very similar to the way you're talking about it. You're able to just, if you're bringing value, people share it because it, mm. it, it, it's something in them. It's you're literally become the voice inside their head. Yeah, right. Yeah. And then because you're saying it out loud when they're thinking it internally, now they associate that inner voice with you. Yeah. 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 I love so. it. Cool. Yeah. So, go, go, go ahead. ahead. No, you go ahead. This is your show, buddy. <laughs> It was sounding like you had something to add to it. So, because yeah. I, I, what I was going to say was, then with again, I feel like this is this always happens. Um, I, I try to keep it as conversational as possible, but we always end up kind of circling back to one of the first couple of things we talk about, right? Like being mm -hmm. authentic, and and th that right there is is one of the biggest things. Like you can't be quotable unless you're authentic, because mm -hmm. it's no one else is like you. So yeah. that's what makes that person quotable. That's what makes that person stand out. And I, I love that. Um, so do you really help people extract that from them? Do you, do you help them uh, really come up with the content or, or like that, that, that content strategy, I guess, to, to get out there? Is, is that how, how you're helping people really develop that? Well, yeah, I work, you know, both in their creating their brand so that they become a brand. All right. And I've helped people some create some of the most interesting things. Um, one of, um, one of my clients over the years was a lady who actually was an engineer that owns the patents on your 3G, 4G, and 5G phone. Uh, oh, but she wanted to actually create something online uh, around the fact that of something she did. She lost a ton of weight and she wanted to create a blog around it. And she came to me and she says, I just don't know how to, you know, she's an engineer. She doesn't know how to communicate the content. Yeah. And we just, we labeled her and she, she lost it because she's an Indian woman. She lost it with a vegetarian diet. And she said, I said, well, will that vegetarian diet work for me? She goes, maybe, maybe not. Depends on your body type. I said, so what you're saying is it's an engineered idea. And she goes, yeah, we labeled her the weight loss engineer. So she talks about body type. She talks about, you know what I mean? Diets with body. I mean, because she's an engineer by trade, it works. Um, one of the most unique ones I ever helped create was a lady who wanted to create a book on communications. She was a 911 operator and she was going to do a book on communication. She was retiring and wanted to know what to do. And I said, do you think you could sit down and write down a few different ways to work with people one-on-one? -on -one? She goes, yeah. I says, maybe you can come up with nine of them. Yeah. And I said, why don't you write a book called 911 Communications, Nine Ways to Communicate with People One-on-One, -on -one, The Ideas of Communications from a Former 911 Operator. I love that. that was great. My, wait a minute, wait a minute. And my coach, all right, the master, I mean, to me, he's a master brand creator sitting in the room and he was like doing something. And I said that and he went. Yeah. And I'm I like, you know, and I, and he goes, well, where'd you ever come with that? I says, I learned from the best. I immediately took, it was his room. I turned to him in his room. I said, I learned from you on how to do this. Now people jumping into his mastermind because they're like, wait a minute, this guy's, you taught this guy to do that. You can teach me. And I'm like, yeah, he became, he was original, became quotable. All right. And I, that, what I learned to do, become original, become quotable. All right. Go out and help people with their brands, help them stand out by themselves, help them like really look like they are the one person in their industry. There's no competition. They are the one. And that's what I want to help my clients do, become the one in their industry. I love it. The, I, I like to call it the go-to, right? Mm -hmm. Like when you think of, you're like, oh, who's that? Um, oh, right. Call that person. Mm -hmm. It's, mm -hmm. it's I, um, I, I have a feeling you know who Dean Jackson is. That, that name sounds familiar. Yeah. I, 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 yeah. Oh, okay. So uh, he's like this old school email marketer, one of... Uh, one of my uh, like acquaintances he's he's a mentor of one of my mentors he talks about the like you mentioned earlier about this nine word email he, he teaches a lot about email marketing and whatnot um mm -hmm. one of the things that he said in the past before to me was um 
it's really interesting. And I, oh my gosh, I lost my train of thought for a second. But he was saying, he said like one of the easiest ways to say what you do and how you help or sell something. He said he he goes about this like horse for sale, right? Putting it out there like, hey, um, make this. Sometimes you just need to put that sign in there that says literally says horse for sale. And yeah. it sounds like what you help people do really make it again going without using the word simple, like making it really just as simple as putting that sign out that says like this is what I do, this is how I help, and making them really just stand out as that only horse that's available right now for sale. Does that yeah. make sense? Yes. So, and exactly that's it. I mean, and you know what I mean? When I say that, I, I learned that nine word email idea. Frank Kern is one of my mentors. Oh, all Frank right. is yeah. awesome. Yeah. <laughs> He's just awesome. All right. Yeah. Uh, but like when I come up with the idea, we're looking for like the, the idea to, to create what we call simple, easy marketing now. Mm -hmm. um, the whole idea I was looking at when, I, when I, I was developed this over the years was what's the fastest way to get customers to buy? Just lead them to the next step, one step at a time. You got to make it. You got to make it for them. So the nine-word email is it, it's not to sell. It's to get people to open the email. Yeah. Well, you know what I mean. It has a simple call to action. Go watch the video. The video yeah. is a short video to learn something, and then at the end of the video, if they're learning, they'll then I make them an offer. In some cases, the offer is, hey, click the button down below and sign up for my new program. It's that it's going to be free. Hey, yeah. click the button down below. You know what I mean? It's sometimes you make it so simple. It's just leading them one step at a time. Simple, easy is not about, hey, how can I make it simple and easy for me to do? No. How can I make it simple and easy for my clients to go to the next step? I love it. Yep. I, I, I feel like we need to talk about this on a separate episode again, because I feel like there's definitely a lot we could dive into with just that piece right there. There's so much you can do that I think people tend to, most people tend to overcomplicate that, whatever you want to call it. Um, I, I call it client experience. Uh, most people call it customer journey. But that, that's essentially what it is, right? You, you make it easy so that they can get momentum. And they associate that momentum with you. Um, what, what does Frank always say? The, the good old uh, help them by actually helping them trick. Yeah, help them by actually help, showing you yeah. can help, show them you can help them by actually helping them. Yeah, yeah, I love it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, like actually help them without without you being there or charging for it, so that they can realize, like, oh, that I can't. Because I think the biggest objection, and it, tell me what you think about this, but the biggest objection for most people is like, yeah, it works for everyone else except for me. Oh yeah. I agree. Everybody thinks that way. All right. I look at Frank's stuff and go, well, yeah, that'll work for everybody, but it won't work for me <laughs> because, and, and I have a list of because's. All yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, it comes from, I mean, every, everybody in the world uh, compares your worst to their best. And that's exactly what our problem is, is we compare. Uh, you know, uh, trust me, every day I think I'm a failure. It's not, it's not a random thought. All right. I think it every day. Uh, and yet I have loads of people who say I'm successful. I never tout my own horn and say, well, good old Tim. No, Tim's just screwed <laughs> it up. And he's doing one screw up at a time to figure out. And every now and then one of those screw ups works and you go, I got to do that again. <laughs> yeah. I, li I like to do that with my team. I'm like, hey guys, I have about a million ideas. They're probably all crap, but there might be one diamond in there. So let me know if you see it, if you hear it or something like that. And it just goes. So yeah, I, I completely get that. You just you got to just play. Like it's it, all about playing the game. The, the most successful entrepreneurs are the ones who keep playing all the time. They never stop. Maybe, maybe we should make a challenge for your listeners and say, okay, I want you to write down a hundred ideas that you don't think will work. And the first person to call it, write us back. All right. Uh, with the one thing that they tried that they didn't think would work and it worked. <laughs> I, I like this challenge. Let's do that. So let's, 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 I'm going to put a challenge out. I've never done this. I want to put a challenge out to the audience. Like write down, let's say a hundred things that you, a hundred ideas, just hundred ideas. It does. Yeah. It's hundred ideas. Yeah. There's a hundred ideas, whatever comes to mind and then try them out. See what happens. Let me know what, uh, what works, what doesn't, mm -hmm. or let me know what did work that you yeah, didn't expect. Tell us. Yeah. We, we, yeah. And, and the first person to write us back, showing us the list of a hundred and the one thing they tried that worked. Now you realize it may be number 99 that you tried to find that one work. <laughs> yeah. But the faster you go through the list, the sooner you'll find one that works. Oh yeah. <laughs> I, I love it. You know, what's funny. Uh, 
I feel like it's always the thing that you don't think is going to work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know what that is, but you're like, I don't know about this one, but why not? And then that's the one that ends up being the best one. You're like, how did that happen? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I I absolutely love it. So uh, as far as repurposing and creating the content, we don't have to create new things over and over and over. We have to market what Mm -hmm. we've created. Yeah. Like if we build it, they won't come. It's not a thing. Um, I'm glad, I'm glad you said that. And so we need to, first, we need to create our content and we, we can create the same content over. We just make it better, even better next time. And it gets more accurate, more succinct, more simple. And it allows us to really speak to that person and be the voice inside their head. So Mm -hmm. as long as we can market it and create it and just make it even better as we continue to grow and learn ourselves, then it sounds like we're on the right path. Yep. Yep. So I love it. Uh, and I teach people, I mean, the, 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 content creation game has not changed in 25 years, create content, market content, create community, monetize community. It is not changed. And I know you think you've got a new way. Trust me. It works that way. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I believe it. There, 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 these are foundations for a reason. <laughs> like yes, yes. everyone just puts their own little twist on it. I feel like that's all it is. Yeah. And it's, it's, I think the, even though everyone's putting their own twist on it, the reason we create that following is because people like and understand it the way we've explained it. Yeah, yeah, that's it. You, they, they just liked, they like how you explained it versus how I explained it. And that's right. it. You're going to, and you know, you, and trust me, I am not offended that you found it easier for him to explain it than you did me. Because you know what? He's going to introduce me to somebody and they're going to find it easier the way I said it. And oh, yeah somebody's going to Google the name Frank Kern and find out he said it easier. And that's just the way it is. <laughs> yep. Absolutely. Yeah, and, and I'm not offended that you found a better way. Guess what? I bring people to my stages all the time because in case I'm not the coach, I want you to at least walk away and go, I'm working with that person. Yeah. Great. Somebody moved forward. Yes. Yeah. And that's, that's the thing. Like when we're, <laughs> I feel like it goes back to exactly what we just talked about, quoted Frank. Like the good old help them, show them you can help them by actually helping them trade. It doesn't yeah. mean that you have to help them. Perhaps you can start to lead them down the path, but then they're like, oh, there it is. That guy is the one who had the flashlight who led the way. You know, like sometimes you need someone to, to help you because what? I, I'm sure like you, you, you said like Frank is your mentor. Um, my, my mentor is actually mentored by Frank as well. Nick, Nick Kuzman, um, mm-hmm. Nicholas Kuzman, he, he, he sees things that I can't see in my own business, right? Yeah. Just like he goes to Frank to see things that he can't see in his own business. Like we all need help and we all help each other in some way or another. I love it. So, I mean, and what is it, well, you know what I mean? Well, you take that on, I mean, I, I guess I could, I could, I could put it in the old Tim quote words and say, uh, you know, uh, if I can't help you, I can lead you to somebody who can. If I can't help you, I can lead you to somebody who can. I love it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much uh, for coming on today and really providing that insight. I know um, we had uh, some complications before this, but I, I really do appreciate it. Uh, and until next time, do you have any final words or any, any place like so anyone can learn more about how you help them or how they can, how you can help them? Hey, my, my name is Tim Gillette. That's G-I-L-L-E-T-T-E. First name, Tim. You know what I mean? Tiny Tim. That's why my mom named me. Okay, go to timgillette.com. All right. Uh, I've got a million other websites I can send you to, but Tim Gillette is my name. Uh, go to timgillette.com and you can Google me and find out who I am. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate it for coming onto the show today and really breaking down and diving into uh, what content is and breaking out of the myth really of like having to always create new content, but we're just really making content that much more simpler for people. And they're going to like the way we say it over the way someone else said it. Thank you so yep. much again for coming onto the show today. Thanks. Yeah. Awesome. So now before I forget, if you're serious about generating never ending leads, then head on over to ventobots.com forward slash book to get your free copy of the complete automation strategy, the four phases we use to generate never ending leads for our private clients. That way you can start to generate never ending leads yourself, bring offer the cookie before the milk. Now that's how I like to explain it. I'm sure Tim loves his own way of explaining that. However, to each his own. So until next time, I'm Victor with Ventabot, and I will see you on another episode.